Hello everyone, welcome to Spectrum Glasses. Today in this video we are going to discuss about the proton NMR. So what is called proton? Here is proton and proton means one edge and why we call it proton because in this uh, one edge nucleus we are having simply one proton, no neutrons are there. So we call it as proton 2. Okay, so here is the proton and we are going to interpret the proton NMR spectrum. So there are four different steps to identify or to interpret the proton NMR spectrum. First, one has to identify the number of signals. Fine, so number of signals one has to identify first by seeing the molecular formula which is given over here. In the last video we have already discussed about some features of the molecule where one can identify the number of chemically different protons in a given molecule. Fine. So today again we are going to discuss and we will also discuss about the intensity of the signal. The second point is that one has to measure the intensity of the signal. So there are two terms which we are going to discuss in this video and in the next video we are going to discuss about the position of the peak. That is the third step, position of the peak. Position means the chemical shift value. Okay. The next step is splitting of the signals due to the neighboring protons or neighboring different nuclei which are NMR active. So these are the four points we are going to discuss one by one and this is very basic or preliminary type of uh, interpretation video. This is basically I have made for the BTEC first year students and for the beginners. Okay. Okay. Here I just uh, tell you how these four features work. So first identify sub, say number of peaks are 2 in a given spectrum. Okay. So what is their intensity ratio? Uh, uh, suppose this is 1 is to 1. This is 1 is to 1. So this 1 is to 1 means the integration of this peak is like this. Or area under the peak. Here area under the peak is equal for both the peaks. Okay. So that is 1 is to 1. It signifies that there are uh, one same number of protons are there. If it is, uh, if the intensity ratio is changed, so we have multiple of that number of protons in the in the molecule. So here, one thing number of peaks. Second, its intensity, and the point third is where is the peak observed on this NMR spectrum. Here it is 0 say and it is going on increasing. Suppose this is 10 ppm. Okay. So 0 to 10 at this scale where the peak observed. So position of the peak is important again. Like all the points are important. There are several factors which affect the position of the peak. So we will discuss that also. And the fourth step is. Here the splitting of the peak. So suppose one proton is nearby to this. So that peak will be split into two. In this manner. So how this, this is the final spectrum for a given compound. So with all these four steps we will identify the molecule or we can say which molecule is this. Or we can say how the NMR spectrum looks like. So in either sense one can discuss this. So let's start with the identification of number of signals. So here suppose I am having, first we will start with the interpretation of NMR spectrum. Right. So here is my first molecule. On the last turn we have also discussed some of the molecules. So here for again I am just going to discuss some of the molecules which are chemically uh, either same or they are different, different protons. So here we are going to discuss about the molecules, how many peaks for a given compound will be observed. So here there are two important points through which one can identify the number of peaks. First, either you can draw the molecule in this manner and then count the number of protons which are attached to this like this okay and then count is 
there is their bindings with other atoms is same or different if it is same then they are of same type if it is chemically same okay i am not talking about the magnetically same okay so here if they are having same type of bonding with other atoms then that are called same type of bonding first thing is that second point is that first you can identify the symmetry in the molecule okay so this is having symmetry so these two uh, methyl groups are of same type okay or the protons attached with these methyl groups are of same type so here the second point is that first we will identify this if there is a symmetry in the molecule so this and this protons attached to the carbon or methyl groups are of same type now we have to identify whether these three are of same type or different type then that also apply to this methyl group okay so these three as we discussed in our previous video these three are attached to this carbon which is attached binding of these protons is same so these three are of same type right so these three are of same type since uh, this molecule is having symmetry this molecule is symmetric so half and half molecules are same we are having one signal okay we are having one signal in this molecule right and this signal intensity with respect to other ones or we can do the integration of this actually this integration is done by the machine so we are not doing anything we are just simply calculate whether this is given or no and in the spectrum the value is given over here right so whatever be the value the area under the peak is given over here in this sense the next is this molecule whether this molecule is having symmetry or not so this molecule is doesn't have symmetry uh, have different type of protons present in this molecule since there is no symmetry okay so these are uh, these two are different so two peaks will be observed in this molecule simple another way the second way if you are unable to identify in this manner here we are having this and this so you can identify this and the next is next is suppose we are having this h h and h so these two are of same type because they are attached with the carbon which is attached on one side chlorine and on the other side it is attached to the carbon atom so these two are of same type whereas these three are of same type these three so we are having two signals in the spectra of this molecule fine so two signals two peaks or two signals will be there first secondly as i told you about the intensity so two signals will be there so this is of two times and this is of three times area under the peak is in 2 is to 3 ratio okay right now i am not talking which is on the left side which is on the right side proton these are the protons which are attached to this chlorine atom okay so intensity ratio or the area under the peak intensity ratio or area under the peak is 2 is to 3 ratio is in 2 is to 3 ratio fine so here number of signals and their intensity the third is given over here this is my third molecule okay so first we will see whether there is symmetry in the molecule yes there is symmetry in the molecule so these two methyl groups are of same type so only one signal will be there okay one signal will be there or you can and if you try to identify these three are of same type so we will have one signal and the intensity of that signal since we are not comparing with this signal with other so whatever be the area under the peak that corresponds to the protons over here and in the nmr spectrum the value or area under the peak is given in this sense here is the delta ppm here is the intensity value so i hope you guys understand this the next is okay we will discuss with some more examples 
here we are having CH2, single bond CH2 and ClCl. So we can see the symmetry in this molecule. We can see the symmetry in the molecule. So this CH2 and this CH2 are of same type. So we are having one signal in this molecule and we are having one peak okay for four protons so one signal for four protons the second molecule on this page is we can divide it in the half and half parts by the symmetry no here this mole molecule is not symmetric about the center so no symmetry is there so we are having three different signals okay so three different signals are there in this three peaks. Now fine. So suppose I just mark this A, this B, this C. Okay. And now if we are just comparing their intensity of the signals. So A is three times. B is two times. And C is three times again. So here these three to one what is that? Here this is 3, this is 2, this is 3 again. If we are having the NMR spectrum of this compound, then what we are getting? We are simply getting, here is the A, which is 3 times. Then my C, which is 2 times. And again I am having B. So this is suppose 3, area under the peak. Area under the peak is 2 and 3 ratio. Okay. These are given in this manner. If simple spectra is given to you, then there are some grid lines and through that grid lines one can count these integrals. Okay. And then we will get the intensity ratio. This is simple intensity ratio. There, If we are having exactly the value of area under the peak, then by dividing that we can get the intensity ratio in that. Okay. So this is my delta value. And this is my intensity. So intensity is in, in which ratio? This is 3 times, this is 2 times and this is again 3 times. In the next molecule is sub, simply see the symmetry in the molecule. So these two are of same type. They are, have, they are having same type of attachment to the molecule. This is different than this. How it is different from this? Because this is attached to two carbons. However, this carbon is attached to one carbon and one oxygen. In this manner, here you can see this is different attachment. If I am talking about this type of attachment, so this carbon is attached with one carbon and the second carbon. Okay. So this carbon is attached to carbon. However, this carbon is attached with one oxygen and one carbon. Similarly, this carbon is attached with one carbon and the other oxygen. So here we are having two type of signals. So suppose I simply put these two protons as A protons and this proton as B proton. So I will get two peaks. Okay. I will get two peaks. And what about the intensity ratio of these two peaks? Position of the peak or the chemical shift value depends on the three factors. Okay. So for BTEC first year, uh, two factors are important and the third factor is a little important. Okay. So first is electronegativity of the atoms attached to the proton atoms. Okay. This is called inductive effect also. This A is uh, we can say this A is equal to inductive effect. The second one is mesomeric effect, resonance, mesomeric effect or resonance. And the C is magnetic anisotropy, anisotropic. Three are the important points on which uh, the position of the signal depends. So for example, if we are having this CH3, CH2 uh, and Cl, Okay, so this CL, I am just giving one example. Uh, in the next video, we are going to discuss all these points in detail. So suppose I am having this CL over here. This CL is more electronegative or its electronegativity is 3.5 on the Pauling's scale, right? So this is my 3.5 chlorine. So what is electronegativity means or inductive effect means? This atom can pull the elect bonding electrons okay 
if there are bonding electrons then this chlorine has tendency due to this high electronegativity to pull these electrons towards its side if it is pulling the electrons towards its side then the density of the electrons around this ch bond and this ch bond is decreases okay let me uh, draw this diagram over here we are having this type okay this cl pull the electron density towards its side so here we are having delta minus and delta plus charge if it is delta having delta plus so it will try to pull the electron towards its side okay so proton is having less electron density towards or around it so if it is having less electron density around it so it resonates at higher frequency value or higher delta value so if we are talking about these two suppose i just put this a and this b so here is my a this is my a signal and this is my b signal okay in 3 is to 1 ratio 3 is to 2 ratio so this is my a this is my b so depending on the electronegativity so since this these protons be directly attached to the carbon atom which is attached directly to the chlorine so chlorine have tendency to pull the electron so electron density around the protons decreases and we know that if electron density around the nucleus decreases it means uh, it experience the applied external field if it it is surrounded by the electrons then it resonates at higher field value okay so this i have discussed in detail in my previous video i will give the link of that video in the description box so you please go and check that video for more details why it resonates at this side so this is the first how inductive effect affect the position of the peak right so this in the position of the peak we will discuss in our next video in more detail i hope you understand the concept of ident to identify number of signals and intensity of the signals now in the next video we are going to discuss in detail about the position of the peaks and signals okay and then after we will going to discuss about the splitting of the peak or coupling constants in detail so please keep watching i hope you understand the concept thank you